Hey, look at that logo. That's wow, awesome. what a great logo. That's you guys awesome. Seen this logo? Oh, oh, shit. Must be time to get started. All right, guys, yeah, we, we are, are back. back. Every time. You know, huh? Yeah, I've been All here right, before. We're back. Uh, and we have a very special guest, longtime friend of mine. Put this a little closer to your mouth. There we go. New to microphones. Um, That's right. Lynn Oding, Hollywood director. We've been training together since 96. Yeah, something like that. And we trained MMA together. Before there was really MMA gems, we're training at Tim Moosel's and like, Ten you, what? you always, huh? Tim what? Tim Mosel. Tim, Tim Moosel. Oh, Tim Mosel. Mosel, yeah. He had like a gymnastics gym, but we trained MMA there. Yeah, so he like the, rented. Gym, the gymnast looked at us and we were just like, they're just like, what the fuck are those guys doing? <laughs> That's right. I hope and who's the guy you train with? Uh, Paul Gardner. No, Paul, but you train with an Indian guy, right? Um, oh, and then uh, Zolfi. Zolfi, yeah. It, he it, was the one that it, hosted the Dungles. And Bushi right? Bond yeah. and moved to uh, Torres de Ponte. I don't think he's Indian. Wasn't no, no, Indian Pakistani. Yeah. Oh, Pakistani, that's right. He probably he won't be too dark. mad about it. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, and then we, we, you, you were taking the route of film. I remember right. you were working on Walker, Texas Ranger a lot, doing a lot that's of stunt right. work. Me and Eve Edwards, <laughs> was we were the three of us. So there was four of us, actually. I don't know, you were on Walker? Yeah. I fucking so love check, Walker. So check, Texas, check it out. So it was four of us. So there was... Me, it was Lynn, it was Eve Edwards, and it was Jace Jeans. Yeah. So there was four of us technically starting out together. Uh, Lynn was pursuing film the most, Jace following him. Me and Eve were like UFC all the way. Like we're going to be UFC champions, and you know we're going to yeah. UFC. We're going to, and dude, we all kind of we all kind of did it, right? Yeah. Like you're in Hollywood doing directing feature films now. And TV just yeah. got done directing Braven. Yeah. I had 15 fights in UFC. Eve's had a ton of fights in UFC. Yeah. Like we we did it, man. Yeah, that's right. Jace got me on the set with uh, Jason Statham. He's that's he's right. a stunt double. So it's like, of us four, fuck. That's crazy. Yeah, what, yeah. what a lot of luck we four. had, huh? Yeah, really crazy. making me feel like shit, guys. And awesome. then I, and then this, and I met this guy. And he's our podcast <laughs> co-host. <laughs> okay. All right. You're doing a great job, though, Mark. <laughs> is it almost over? How long is he's, this? Uh, You're doing a great job. Yeah. I hate you both. Yeah. So um, so since people don't know um. When you were first getting into film, back when we were getting mar- when we were doing martial arts, we were training. You were branching off into stunt work. Go into like kind of why you chose stunt work, and then how that how your your rise was through well, Walker Texas Ranger. And then yeah, getting when in we Hollywood. were when you and I were doing uh, the MMA stuff together and training. I guess back then it wasn't even MMA. It was called NHB, No Holds Barred. Yeah, where you're was right. This? You're right. Yeah, and me Texas, in, in Texas. Well, no, no, I get that, but where? Like, yeah, uh, it would be like. Like I don't know the cross streets, Mark. Like, well, yeah, was it like, downtown? Was it in Clear Lake? I mean, no, it was, uh, you know, downtown Houston. Yeah. Diff- different, like boxing. We had to go gyms. to every gym, like boxing, kickboxing, BJJ. Yeah. and you would do these gymnastics. Like, Sorry, guys. Just, you, just to let you know, for once in a while, I'm going to ask a question during this. So I apologize. <laughs> okay. No, we'll let you. Disrespect we'll me asking where it was. Shit. Don't ask it again. Tough crowd. But if you do, it was downtown Houston, somewhere around there. Yeah. All right, thank you. So we would do these NHB no holds barred <clears throat> competition fights. Where it would be like we were training Muay Thai, we were training Jiu Jitsu, and then our coach was like, "Hey, do you want to put together and do this thing called NHB? It's no holds barred and blah blah blah. And you can you can't do everything. You can kind of do whatever you want, but there's rules, kind of. But you just can't like hit yeah. the groin. They it was weird. It was time. so Very it was so like yeah, they changed yeah. it every time we fought. Yeah, it was so ghetto. But we would do these competitions. Two fights a night for forty bucks or something like that. No, something. we didn't get paid. Yeah. We didn't Barely. get paid. No, you didn't get paid. But you'd fight two or three times. Yeah. It was kind of like Valet Tudos, and we had the Dungles, and we had that's right. Then just miscellaneous pancreation matches. Yeah, and, and the like, okay, guys. Had, Mosels had his own. Dungle had their own. Yeah, they're like, okay, guys. So uh, you can <laughs> open hand palm strike to the face. It's like pancreas rules. And you can knee to the face and kick to the face, but no punching. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, okay. Then someone was like, okay, no strikes to the face. You do groin so we just like, like just beat the shit out of each other's breasts, <laughs> like while we're that's right. fight. Yeah, there's, there's no strikes to the face. Like a speed bag. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was like an MMA fight, but you can't punch <laughs> the face. So you can't even get a knockout. I'm a striker, did, and I'm going against BJJ guys. So I'm like, what the fuck, I'm supposed to do? How did y'all do in that round kicks? You do leg kicks. We did good. You we all did the body. Good. Yeah, dude, I only lost like one fight in, in 20 fights, something amateur. Oh shit. Yeah, I didn't know you uh, ever fought. Yeah, I did. Dude, he has a nice uh, highlight. If you look on YouTube, type his name and a uh, spinning back kick. Uh, switch kick, lead leg switch kick. Come on, don't yeah, real discredit. Nice. I don't know much about not martial arts. Yeah, yeah, it's not like I spent thirty years doing it. So throughout I, I get the, a uh, kick wrong every no, once in a while. The reason why that the reason why Mike would do really well in the MMA f- 
circuit. I, well, we'll call it MMA from this point forward, but it really was NHB at the time. But the reason Mike would do well and Eve Edwards and myself and all the reason we would do well is because everyone that entered these competitions would be like they would show up with their karate gi yeah. or they would show up with like their like their wrestling trunks. Like everyone was only doing one discipline back then. It was like so, Cobra Kai would show up like thinking yeah, like, exactly. breaking boards would beat us and exactly. we just destroyed them. Yeah. With, with so Cobra you, Kai. Yeah. Yeah, I'm six months exactly. younger. Exactly. You. I don't know. We're the reason you don't know what Cobra Kai is. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason you're in martial arts. I already know. So it would be easy. Mike would look at a guy, or or we would look at a guy and be like, okay, he's from the kickboxing school, and we yeah. know they don't yeah. they don't do jujitsu. So we would move around, shoot a, a, a double, yeah. which you know we didn't know any chain wrestling, nothing. It was just like a blast double, take yeah. him to the ground. We didn't tap need him to because nobody knew what the hell. Yeah, it was. exactly. They didn't yeah. know when you had to wrestle at all. Or you'd fight a guy who looks like he was from a jujitsu school. So all you had to do was your basic sprawl because they couldn't chain wrestle they had jujitsu shoots so they would just do a sloppy shoot you'd stop their takedown and kick their legs until they and punch them in the arm you're yeah, punch, in the face. Exactly. yeah <laughs> punch them in the chest so there was a lot of fights like frog them yeah. yeah i and did I, was, I don't know you did all that man there's yeah. a good clip of me and 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 uh one of my fights where i like was up on top of a guy and had his leg across me on like i was on top had his leg like this and i was just like like 12 six elbows which is illegal in the ufc actually uh right on his shin i was just mm. like god 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 i don't know it, it was cool at the time because like that's the most violent I could get. But uh, yeah, so there you so go. How many fights did you have in amateur? Total with uh, amateur uh, kickboxing, uh, jujitsu, MMA, all that's about twenty. Yeah. Well done. Have My last fight was at this thing called UT Fight Night, where it was like the fraternities fight each other. And I. Uh, you were in a fraternity? No, I wasn't even in a fraternity. <laughs> no, he's went and beat no, him I know, up. I know, I know. We that's... found people that didn't know I as much it. as us. And then we you know how we feel about people in fraternity. <laughs> that, was how, that was our style. You know, we no, I joined. Karate I guys are there, we're there. No, I went to the Asian fraternity on campus at UT, and I was like, hey, I know Asian you guys have fraternity. never fought. The this orchestra? Is a true story. <laughs> was it the orchestra? <laughs> <laughs> Did you expect that they were Asian so they'd know how to do martial arts? No, I didn't. But you I knew they get away with being racist. No, I didn't know they fought and fought. Was it racist or Asian? No, I knew they hadn't fought in fight night, so I was like, do you guys want someone to represent you? And they're like, oh, hell yeah, because they knew I'd fought. So then I signed up, and then, of course, like no one there no actually knows how to fight. It's just right, people brawling. So like, like it was a short fight, and I lost. But no, I'm just kidding. It was... <laughs> Well, I, I knocked this guy out in like 40 seconds yeah. but it's like when you're when you're uh what's it called uh sp like it's like literally sparring somebody who's never sparred before yeah it's really easy to that was most of our matches yeah people hear my record they're like you know, you've had 20 something fights you only lost one but it's like i mean like we were just oh, we were man. beating average joes you, you know the, yeah. we're you know chopping karate but i remember him karate and his, buddy, against his buddy boards paul paul garner, garner, garner airboard son of him yeah. yeah they were like like you know, we, we would our gyms would cross train and we would train together and stuff. And I remember like the their reputation were like the two dudes that had like the most heart in Houston. Like those guys would just oh, like boy. train like crazy. Here we go. Run like is it, am, I, am I blowing up his ego? No, uh, more. No, keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, no, no, we, but we, every, we but overly did it. I think, no, I think yeah, bit. like Eve and I and Jay would be like, dude, those guys do they ever stop running and training? And we then went couple, to every gym like you could possibly. Yeah, find. they went to every gym. They had like crazy conditioning. <laughs> Like like extremely low body fat, just like it was Did just you ever like see us fight together. Ridiculous. Like just, we would like fight each other. Like they put us together and we would just like beat the shit out of each other. Oh, like good we, friends. Yeah, it was rough, man. And then I and then when I heard he got on the Ultimate Fighter, I was like, I don't know, because you know you can't predict a, the outcome of a fight. <clears throat> but I was like, but I know that dude's not going down easy because uh, he was just like his his like sort of like what do you call it? fighter spirit? Not to sound martial arts cheesy but that's what it was well, like that's kid lying over there <laughs> kid, kid lying. is that mark hunt by the way <laughs> yeah he's naked <laughs> oh my gosh you have to watch episode number th three. three episode number three. three yeah and then you can see uh mark hunt be flabbergasted we'll at his own an episode at his own action figure with this penis that japan made him look how small and, and then we have a poster of it hanging in our studio crazy. Do you want to take why, it home? why not no, walk like in the studio i'd like to turn it around actually it's autographed so i mean throw that on ebay Nice penis light switch, whatever you want to call it. We were actually going to cut it out and put it as the light switch. That's awesome because it's so small on the on the action. That figure. was my original joke. Now we don't know. We don't know how big Mark Hunt's penis actually you need is. To grab so it is, so the audience can see what you're talking about. No, they got to go to episode number three. Okay. Get some views. Ooh, well played. Yeah, yeah. yeah see, well played. I'm a man. Unless they're on iTunes, and then they're just fucked. Yeah, then they're just fucked. Don't Google know, uh, never Mark, see Hunt Mark Hunt penis. See penis. if you can see one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah that, so we fought and then uh so then you got you, you pursued film and 
you know, obviously I was trying to get in the UFC and make a name, but my, my long-term goal was to build a reputation, get in the UFC, be this like, you know, respected fighter and then eventually become like Chuck Norris. You know, I wanted to, you were there working with him, but yeah. I, want, I wanted to be him, you know, I wanted to end That's up awesome. being Chuck Norris in the future. So I was always envious that you were being able to do all these cool things, even though I was still advancing my career <laughs> and fighting and, and doing what I wanted to do. So it was like, it was kind of a mixed thing. Cause I was like, man, he's fucking living the dream. And he's over there <laughs> working on set. He's working with all these cool people. He's like doing all this cool stuff. So, so explain kind of how that was like, transitioning into stunt work and then you did a ton of stunt work then stunt choreography then directing yeah so the cliff notes version is basically i went to school at ut austin went to film schools in the film program uh and i sent one of my videos to the only tv show in texas called walker texas ranger and chuck Huge norris fan. i am i love it <laughs> it was great oh, chuck right? or trevette his sidekick you mean cordell cordell Come on, man. Oh, my gosh. You know, yeah. he lost, he's, he's hardcore he fan. lost a fight every single episode, Cordell did. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, yeah, it's a fun fact that nobody knows about. Okay, he's a WTR. hardcore, hardcore dude. That's Walker, WTR, Texas that's Walker, Ranger. Texas Ranger. Yeah. I love WTR. <laughs> yeah. WTR, leave me alone. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, yeah, anyway, Martin go ahead. Is Walker time. Uh, no, so I sent a video to them. Uh, one of, uh, it's like had MMA stuff, some homemade um, stunt video parkour stuff that I had done, like running off, off walls and doing backflips, wheelies, wheelies on my motorcycle, things like that. And then I sent it to them, and his son, Eric Norris, watched <laughs> I'll it. I'll show you this one. And was like, hey, uh, you can if you go on YouTube and you Google or YouTube search my name, you'll see like a stunt reel from many years ago. They had YouTube in 97? No. I put it on YouTube years oh, okay. later. I was, oh, I thought you showed I him. I think it's the, the last one. It's been updated. It was like 2007 or 2011. Yeah, like a VHS type he was handling. Yeah, exactly. People. Actually, I was. I was walking around handing out VHS tapes to people <laughs> when I was starting <laughs> I out. Was I was guessing, like, but wow. I, I was. Sense, yeah. yeah. Now, I remember I went to the set of Mission Impossible 3, and I showed up with a VHS tape, and I was like, here you go. And <laughs> the guy looked at me, and he was hardcore, like. That's hardcore, dude. Because yeah. that, that, like, that was around, oh, Oh shit! Number what was three that? must oh, have been oh four, oh five, six, right? seven ish. But that was when DVDs that were uh, VHS was like were officially fading out, and DVDs were turning like becoming the thing wow. to where it became a like nowadays. Obviously, if you had a VHS, people would look at you like you're crazy, right? But back then, it was still like on the, the cusp, and then DVDs like within a year became the thing, and then they stopped making VHSs. But I remember like. Think, didn't think, not thinking it was too strange to like bring my VHS tape to set and be like, hey, can I get on? You know, and if there's any stunts available for this movie, I'd love to work on it. But back to what we were saying before, I sent it to Chuck. Chuck's son, Eric Norris, watched the video. He was the fight choreographer, stunt coordinator. Said, would you like to come do fight scenes with my father? This is the Cliff Notes version. So I said, oh, absolutely. I was so stoked. I drove three hours from Austin to Dallas. And I would I did like, you know, a half dozen episodes of Walker. Every couple months I would do one while I was in film school. And then I did that my junior, like sophomore, junior year. And then my senior year, I was still working with Chuck on Movie of the Weeks and different things like that. They were shooting in Dallas and a spinoff TV show he did. Um, Are you so friends I, with this guy? Like no. You and Chuck? Just but, like, yeah, we but like they Chuck, would fly we just did most a of these. Week. No, they would, they would, no, no movie, movie of the Week. I, I didn't do a Movie of the Week with them. No, no, I said that with the yeah, Week. Yeah, Movie of the Week. You so know. they would fly most of the stuntmen from L.A., right? And yeah. so they thought, oh, it's if we have a local guy, we don't have to pay for the airfare, pay for the all these Screen Actors Guild stuff that I didn't know about at the time. I was just like, great. So like one week I'd play, yeah, SAG. One week I'd play uh, an Asian gangbanger with like dragon tattoos and like whatever. And then the next week I'd play a Latino gangbanger with like, you know, a mustache. And they would like, but they would recycle me, right? (laughs) So that I could... (laughs) He was the bad guy for every episode. I was like, yeah, like the reoccurring bad guy. WTR. Was it actually filmed... (laughs) <laughs> on VHS. Was it actually filmed in Texas? In Dallas, yeah. Okay. It was filmed in Dallas and surrounding areas. I can't name the exact locations. Richardson. Yeah. Or I can if you want. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he was he was the one standing there taking Man, I love Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah. Chuck lie, was dude. an awesome guy. He was really cool. I remember we did an episode and uh Rush Hour Two had come out and we were on set and he was like talking to it was like a small group of us and Chuck was like, Man, I watched that movie this weekend with that guy. That Jackie Chan guy, he's he's something else. He's so funny. And I was thinking, dude, you're like an action martial arts <laughs> star yourself. What are you talking about? But he was talking about Jackie and how wowed he was at his martial arts on camera. Like, 
like just like a fan like just yeah, like yeah. a pedestrian like a standard like citizen yeah and i was just like you're chuck norris what are you talking about yeah. but he's like did, a, such a humble did guy. you tell that, chuck like, norris that one day they were going to make so many like stories about him and oh, he was going to cool be like it? the legend that he is no but but um his son eric who still works in hollywood as a stunt coordinator said that I it was Aaron. eric yeah eric oh no there's an Aaron. Is that yeah. the, oh. that's his brother uh, but Eric said that his dad actually likes is fl- flattered. It doesn't. Oh, he likes it. Yeah, he likes all the, you know, Chuck Norris. I, I heard he was getting, not getting paid for it in the beginning or something, so he was a little upset. But then, like, he started doing his own or something. I don't know. Who knows? You know, we have that connection with Walker Texas Ranger when we went to uh, film school or um, what was it, acting class. Oh yeah, we had a guy that did less episodes than you as our teacher. <laughs> Just, yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, what he, was his he name? Was, he was a real horrible oh, actor. Fuck. Who knows? He couldn't even act like a teacher. It was so bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what was that? So bad. Downtown Houston? Yeah, he fell asleep, got kicked out of class. Yeah, I got kicked it out. It was embarrassing. Mm. It was embarrassing. <laughs> I was embarrassed to be his friend, and that wasn't acting. <laughs> Interesting. That's fine. Interesting. I took a bow at the end just to pretend like I was acting like I was embarrassed. Just yeah, as my, my final like. So finale. it was a fight training class? No. I don't know, acting. Oh, acting class. Yeah, we did commercials and shit or whatever. And like, oh, yeah, nice. it, was, it was horrible. It, it was a horrible awful. experience. Nice. I'll send you the VHS. I really yeah. want to see it. I think I really on, do. I think it was on, on eight, my mother's ashes. Millimeter. I've got a VHS of us in that class. We do. We had, had two. Blonde we had two. hair, green eyes. We were promised one tape. <laughs> yeah. We paid and we paid. Do you still membership. have it somewhere? His name was Brandon. Uh, no way you remember. I this. know who that is. Brandon. He has an acting school off of uh, the six ten. His name was Brandon. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, Brandon. He also uh, did no off of fifty nine. Fifty nine. Something with a W or something. Or Brand, Brandon. He also Brand, did Brand. A, the movie um, with the three witches that die later on or something like no, that. No, he was in Powder. He had like a bunch of. He he was like the go to. Like one of the like character actor from Houston that did a bunch of like the mid level yeah. stuff. So yeah, he did a bunch yeah, of films yeah. with mid level stuff. Great. Yeah. Whenever he's gonna hate us. No, whenever movies would come to he Houston. He was unnamed until now. Now everyone's gonna know who he is. I'm like, oh really? No, but whenever he'd <laughs> movies would come to Houston like uh, We just got him business. Like Armageddon yeah. or whatever, he'd do like a one line role and all these yeah, like yeah. Yeah, he did a lot of those, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was actually a good instructor, so maybe Well, he hated me. Oh. But I think that's more what it was. I I was just trying to help him out and like what? learn as much as I could, but with him sleeping and passing me notes and making fun of people, like I couldn't pay attention to brand. Passing you notes was it 1987? Yeah. We had cell phones back then. It beepers. No, it was 2001. Oh, whatever. Either way, we got kicked out. Well, I did. You didn't. You just. Well, I just going? left with you because yeah. you got kicked out. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'll be an actor later. <laughs> I had more things to do that day. Acting Have is you not tough, seen the beatdown? Acting is tough. Yeah, I did. I did. I did yeah. film, so I did the beatdown. And, and starring Eve Edwards as well. Yeah. Open so then there was that. One. So uh, let's fast forward. Um, so then there was the the small stuff. Yeah. So I did we that. We call that the small stuff. But then you got into the big stuff. So why don't you talk about the exciting, cool shit you've been doing that makes so me really yeah. Jealous. Long story short, so I did that. I was working with Chuck for a few seasons, and I would do a stunt here, stunt there on different movies that were coming into Texas, and then uh, I got a break working with Jet Li, and I fought Jet Li in a movie called The One, and I also fought him in a PlayStation commercial, and then that led to fighting Steven Seagal in a movie, and then I started working with all the martial art guys. Wait, sorry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt again. You fought Steven Seagal? Yeah. How do I not know any of this shit? What did we talk about last night? Anybody? He's my friend. <laughs> well, uh, I haven't, yeah, I've got a lot of stories about all these different cats. Um, Jet Li's an well, interesting Well, you're on the cat. right uh, platform. Yeah. i got to hear about Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal's, um, no, he was... You know, did he do the crane kick? No, but I remember they told they they told me on set there uh, when we were like about to go in to do rehearse with them. They said you have to wear two cups, and I was like, why two? I've never even heard of wearing two cups. And they said, yeah, because he'll kick you in the ball so hard, you need double protection. Wow. And then they and I said, really? And I go, he doesn't. So the cut. UFC, you only need one, but when working with Steven Seagal, you need, you need two. two. Yeah. Okay. And I said, <laughs> wow. well, I said, you really have to wear two cups, and they said, yeah, because um, he doesn't pull his punches. And he's oh, he, so you know, an old Van Dam have something in common. No, he whoops up on stunt guys, and I was like, shit. How many arms of yours did he break? He didn't break any, but he did punch me in the nose really hard. What movie? Uh, it's called Pistol Whipped. You can see us. We're in the bowling alley scene, and, and this this scene, and I'm playing, you know, one of a few Asian gangbangers, and he, we do a little fight scene, and then he punches me in the face, and I fall back over the. What's the little the return thing that sends the ball, ball back return. up? Yeah, ball return. <laughs> and I fall on the ground, and uh, yeah, we shot that in out in Connecticut. And you fought Jackie Chan too, right? No, or who was the guy you fought and got handcuffed together? In, that was in Jet the Lee. Oh, Jet yeah, Li. Yeah. So I was fighting all those guys. The they're the very one. different. 
Yeah, and then that led to other movies. I remember that and one, I fought. That, the fight scene was pretty cool. Yeah, oh, is that I, where he wore the collar? He yeah. always wears a collar. No, He's no, no, no. Stop. There's like a. He has a twin. He has one of them has a collar on. Like a. I'm trying to remember the one. I love Jet Li movies. But he did yeah. a nice scene with him when they got they were in the handcuffs in the hallway or something. Yeah, like in a hospital. Like hospital. Yeah. Yeah, and so that was doing. I was fighting the martial art guys, and then jumping ahead to what Mike was saying was, then I started f- working on the other movies, uh, the Fast and Furious. I fought a little fight with the Vin Diesel, and then DiCaprio and Inception, and I was saw, and I fought uh, Christian Bale when he was playing Batman, Batman yeah. you know, in Dark Knight Rises, and then I fought Ben Affleck when he was playing Batman in so Batman vs Superman. You beat the shit out of Hollywood's complete A list. No, they all beat him. But they all beat, they beat you. But he only fights yeah. superheroes, so yeah. you're not doing You're a good too call bad. on that. So and I fought, the by rock. Every... I fought The Rock and G.I. Joe 2. I just remember my dad was like, I know, I know you, you'll have made it one day when you win a fight. Because every yeah. single fight. Well, that's when you know you're the, the, the A-list actor, right? Yeah, exactly. I but lost hey, every fight. If, hey, a list of getting Wait, your ass beat by, that's on, not fa- a bad list. Fast and Furious 1? Vindy? No, I worked on Fast and Furious 3, uh, 4, uh, 7, and 8. Holy shit. Yeah. Damn. But, uh, yeah, so I was doing that, and then in 2011, I got out of stunts after doing 100-something movies and TV shows. I got out of stunts. Uh, it was a great experience. I worked in 17 countries or something like that. Saw the world. Met so many cool people over the years. Worked on so many Thank different you. projects, including you. And then uh, I, in 2011 through 2014, for four years, I became a, I was stunt coordinating. Yeah. I didn't really want to get into that, but it kind of just, you know, my career just kind of went there. And so I stunt coordinated movies um, on my own. I, st- I co-coordinated movies with uh, bigger movies. It sometimes it takes two stunt coordinators. So I had a partner named Keith and uh, Keith Willard, and he and I would do movies together like The Equalizer, Olympus Has Fallen, um, you know, and the bigger ones that you have, you know, over 100 stuntmen, you need two sort of bosses. And so I did those movies. And uh, my last one I did was straight out of Compton for Universal Pictures. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, and so that was a pretty. And pretty you wore an AKI cool Thailand project. shirt on set. I wear an AKI Thailand shirt to sleep, to shower, everywhere. You wear it all the time. Yeah, so you I, think I saw I'm you kidding? And Dr. Dre, you had AKI Thailand shirt on. Yeah, with Dr. Dre. Like, yeah, everywhere. Do you yeah. have uh, Do you have the polo so, version? Like so so I, have the, I have the three piece suit so, version. So we got to. So so for people who don't know, stunt coordinating. You that's basically you're the director of the action. Correct. So you're yeah. like, not, there's a director of the movie that does the whole directing of the film, but the director of that, the, well, actually, most directors don't know about action or, or have experience in action. So then you come in as a stunt coordinator, yeah. and you're essentially the director, and you say how the action should be. Yeah, I'll pitch and if it it's to good. the director. So it's all, it's all on your back, how the yeah. scene comes out, how the fight comes out. So it's a big responsibility. And, and I saw you doing uh, Equalizer with Denzel. So you were essentially directing Denzel, and that's when I was like, wow, that's my boy. Right <laughs> that's my boy Denzel right there. Denzel is an awesome Awesome dude, you know, crazy work ethic. He would, we trained for six weeks uh, in LA on Equalizer One, and about six weeks in LA on Equalizer Two, and on Equalizer One he would. Um, There's a the two. F- yeah, two's coming out oh, soon. It's just coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Last summer, I wasn't. I I, I wasn't really st- stunt doing stunts anymore, but he requested to do training for Equalizer 2. So I have an MMA gym in my house, and he'd come over to my house. He lives... Same know. one that I was at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, he does, on, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold on, no, no, no offense, I don't give a fuck about the gym. But Denzel would come to your house. Yeah. He has yeah. a nice house Washington. in LA. Denzel Washington. Okay. Yeah, he lives I, in the Hollywood Hills, I, and we're, we're like... We live like maybe three miles apart off of Mulholland Drive. Yeah. So he, would he lives come in over. a great location, bro. I'll be honest. Yeah. I'm it's nice. I missed the invite. Yeah. Kind well, like next time you're in LA, and he does have an MMA gym in there. It's matted, nice, everything. Yeah, it's got for wall walking, everything. Yeah, yeah. and walls. So the reason, we, like, you can't go rent, like, I could rent like a gym in LA and be like, oh, let's close it off. And Denzel Washington in the corner, tra- like, doesn't yeah. work like that. He's no. too too big of a star. So I told his assistant, I was like, why don't we just do it at my house? And then she, you know, and then I talked to Denzel, and I, he was like, yeah, I'm cool with that. And I have gated. Just talk to Denzel. He has like all security <laughs> gates and like that's awesome. You like yeah. push the button and he's got to be like r- robot answers and like beeps you in and the gate opens and you go down. But send, but then he is an A-list star. He felt like private. So anyways, yeah. he would come over and then I, all the stunt guys would come over. Tyron Woodley was there. Uh, Eve Edwards was there. So I, you know, a uh, combination of MMA fighters and stunt guys, and we would train and do the choreography. Uh, he has a stunt double named Clay Fontenot and the stunt coordinator, Jeff Dashnow. Mm. So we would train at the house. That was for Equalizer 2. But Equalizer 1, we spent six weeks together, uh, three times a week. 
and his work ethic. You know, it's always people like, well, if I, if I was successful, if I was a big movie star, then I would really work hard. Or if I was rich, then I'd really save money. Anytime you hear stuff like that, yeah. it's like, it's just like, it's revert, it's backwards yeah. thinking, right? Like Denzel, that guy would show up every day before session early. He never once said, hey, I'm good for the day. I'm good for, he would, he would wait for me. I'd read him like when he was, looked like he was tired. I'd be like, I said, we're, we're good. And he'd be like, all right, cool, cool, thanks. And then we'd work for about 60, 90 minutes uh, on gun di hand disarms, you know, QC, uh, uh, close quarter um, combat, um, you know, gun, whatever tactical stuff, right? That he that he ended up using in the in the first equalizer. But uh, crazy work ethic. I remember one day he he, he called me. He was like, hey, I got to do a voiceover for uh, two guns. He needed to do ADR. Yeah. Where you go in there and you know redo your dialogue because of you know sound on set it wasn't clear. ADR. So, yeah, ADR. Uh, Automatic dialogue replacement or something like that. I forget what it's called. Um, yeah. Anyways, he had to do ADR. So he calls me and he says, can I come and do a second workout? So he was boxing in the morning, working out in the afternoon with me, and then he would like do double up his workouts on the days he had to miss. Like his work ethic is insane. So whenever I work with other like actors in TV or film and they're like, oh, and they make complaints, I'm like, that's why you're not on this dude's level. Well, you he's know? also, he's got to be what, 50 early 60s is he already 60 so what you're yeah. saying is a lot of these guys that are successful have a good work ethic crazy tom isn't that, cruise isn't that something huh? same thing i remember when i was in i was in 2000 Take notes kids yeah it was 2003 i was in it's not um, just the rock no rock has a crazy work ethic too but i was in 2003 i was in new zealand filming last samurai and i was oh, doing i was in the hair and makeup trailer and there's a people magazine and i was like just flipping through it while they're doing my japanese fu manchu and my samurai stuff and i saw it said tom cruise net worth 400 and 50 million dollars or whatever and i'm like this dude's worth 450 million dollars he flies his helicopter to set lands in the middle of the field um you know in his full regalia of samurai outfit gets up at 4 30 in the morning whatever and he's worth 450 like if i was worth 450 million i'd be sleeping until 7 a.m 10 a.m at least every day like that'd be my that'd be my contract like i am not showing up on a set unless the call time's like nine or ten yeah but like those guys have crazy work ethic that's why they're successful that's man. why they're where they're at yeah so and i'm so jealous of you man because you were in new zealand for like what three months yeah four months yeah. four months oh, so jealous. yeah free trip to new zealand and getting paid good money to be there for four yeah, months yeah i got a house on the beach oh. and we surfed every day it was awesome and i was a struggling fighter at the time so this whole time he's had, he's living this great hollywood life i'm like living in san jose in the most expensive one of the most expensive cities you know in america and like struggling trying to be a ufc fighter and all this stuff and i was like man did i should i follow fucking lynn like should i stay with him like did i make Dude, a big you mistake had a kick ass career are you kidding me like we, we had to stick it out all of us yeah. you know and do it and stick to our you guns, and eve i remember like when i go up to vegas to watch the ufc fights and uh you guys would be on pay-per-view and i'd be like like damn those guys made it it was crazy i think we were all just happy for each it's other it's cool when we all got together and we're just like man can you believe we yeah. remember the old days like when we were all driving around yeah. from gym to gym in texas and we're just it's like crazy what are the fucking chances that the we odds. all had yeah. our goals set and we to some level it reached them you know and and, and yeah. beyond obviously I'm, i i think for definitely sure. beyond because we didn't ex for i could sure. never expect an ultimate fighter to happen and everything else but yeah for sure for sure no it's uh it was pretty cool but um yeah, man, it was it was uh, uh, I was I was very happy for you all those years, seeing how far you come and seeing what you were doing, and then obviously when you opened the gym, the AKA Thailand shirts. So I'm not like um, promoting, I know, I know, but they are some of the most comfortable shirts you got to get ever. Some. If you go to my Instagram, dude, no, I, you know, no, no, I see I them. have I see like them on forty them. on them. If you go to my Instagram, half of the clothes I'm wearing is AKA Thailand. I know, oh, so I, just, I love you it. Got, you have some here that are unworn. Yeah, yeah, and no, we're gonna get yeah. them, we gotta find them, so we'll get you some. So let's do a commercial break while we go look. All right, so we'll, we'll do a segue. commercial break and <laughs> segue, and we will show you what AK Thailand's all about. Where you've been training, so yep. we're gonna watch yep, AK yep. Thailand commercial right now, and then when we come back, Lynn's gonna have some more shirts. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. The great Mike Swick. He's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything.
telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on. All right, so we're back, and what do you think about that commercial, man? Was it pretty good? Pretty dope. Uh -huh. Does that summarize what the gym is or what? I would say so, yeah, for sure. Is that your favorite, but I'm biased, favorite gym? But I'm biased. Well, I'm, t I'm telling everyone all the time that you have the best and dopest gym in the Thanks, man. Earth. Thanks so much. And the biggest gym in the earth. In the, uh, in the <laughs> earth. And the cleanest gym in the earth. Isn't it on the earth? I'll it's take like it. It's like state of the art. Everything. We're in the earth now. Yeah. Oh, those, right. we, never mind. Level, we leveled up. I'm not going to tell you about what I was going to say right there, but I won't. <laughs> Just. All right. I'll timestamp it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. So anyway, okay, so then, uh, so let's fast forward to some of the stuff you've worked on more recently. You've done some other cool stuff. Um, yeah, now, so you're, now you're from that into directing. So you're actually a director now. Yeah, I was a stunt coordinator before, and to t t touch on what you were saying, so basically when I was a stunt coordinator, I would read the script, I would highlight everything that's action-oriented. I would go to the um, you know director, and I would say, hey, I show him headshots. Here's who I have in mind to stunt double this character, this character, this character, and he would say, "I like this one." Or sometimes the directors don't want it. They just you find the stunt doubles, you know. So I would hire the stunt doubles, hire the stunt men, uh, design the action, choreograph the action, be there on set, and then your main job is to facilitate the director's vision, to come in on time, uh, on budget, and to make sure none of the actors get hurt. Uh, that's like your three main jobs, and right. it's a lot of responsibility. So most stunt coordinators. In order to stunt coordinate, you have to have seen like every different type of scenario, stunt, car hits, high falls, window crashes, fire burns, um, like, you know, motorcycle riding and, and uh, stunt rigging, like wire work. So in order to do that, you have to have worked on at least, you know, 100 movies over a, at least a decade, decade and a half to really, really understand the ins and outs of every type of scenario. Because like in order to make sure people are safe, you have to, your job as a stunt coordinator is to identify every variable of what could go wrong and then address every variable of what could go wrong so that no one get, can possibly get hurt on set, right? So like if you're on a, if you're creating a, like a wire gag, if that wire were to snap, this person's gonna die. Okay, well then I'm gonna have a redundant wire that's rated at 35,000 pounds mm -hmm. for someone who's 110 pounds. So like you just make sure nothing can go wrong to the best of your ability. So the stunt coordinators who do really well in Hollywood, keep everyone safe, they don't rush, you know, they make sure that the, the performer feels comfortable, they don't let the production schedule uh, dictate safety, because sometimes a newer stunt coordinators will be like, oh, let's rush, 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 I want to look good to the producers, and then someone gets hurt, you yeah. know, so. Can you touch uh, on um, maybe a good accident you saw? Oh, I've seen a few of accidents yeah. over the, my career, you know, I've only There's been in the emergency serious room. ones too, yeah. Yeah, I've only, myself only been in the emergency th room three times in my career, which I, for, you know, 100 something times more than me. Yeah. yeah. What well, happened? Got knocked out. Oh, so it was they just had to a double check me concussion with your yeah. flashlight in your eyes and stuff like that? Yeah. I, I like, asked what happened maybe a few extra times. You never times. had a single <laughs> stitch or anything? Yeah. Uh, broken bone? I've had stitches on site, like backstage. Gotcha. But the, the, the worst, like, impact fight I had was the Matt Brown fight. So What I, happened? I got knocked out. With a punch? Yeah. Well, like uh, three of them. I don't remember that. One knocked me out and two woke me up. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a good feeling. Get woke, son. I don't like getting woke up by punches or getting remember, knocked out by them. I just remember your uh, highlights. I don't remember the low lights. Well, that's oh. why they're highlights. Yeah. Well, you're on the wrong show then because I always try to bring them up. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most we've ever talked about my wins in, yeah, in I didn't even know you 32 won. episodes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So anyway, you're on the set of ER. What were you we saying? Uh, I did work on ER, actually. It was a <laughs> segue. Oh. I oh, the set of VR. Oh, no. <laughs> you said you went to the emergency room three times. He's yeah, the emergency away. room three times, yeah. yeah. But um, so I did, I did stunt coordinating from 2011 to 2014, as mentioned. Straight Outta Compton was my last film. And then from there, I was making short films all, all along. And then a short film I made got in the hands of some producers. And then I started directing film and television uh, for the last almost two and a half, three years now. Cool. So, yeah. And, that, and wait a minute. So... If I remember correctly, you have one coming, or they just aired Colony? A uh, TV show, yeah, a science fiction TV show called Colony on the USA Network. Yeah, so just you aired just, just two directed ago. that one. Yeah. You do Chicago PD. Chicago, I've directed Fire. Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, Chicago yeah. Med, all three of those shows for NBC. Yeah, those are great shows, too. Yeah. They all intersect. So it's yeah. like these three shows, 
but the characters intersect together. It's it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of people I know watch smart it. plotting. Yeah, to think to take twenty two episodes of each show and have the the characters cross over and have like sub stories of this person's sister works at the firehouse, is this person's brother's a detective, and how everything interweaves. It's he uh, it's like architecture. Well, you told me the other night one of our favorite shows, Shooter. He was going to do a couple episodes of that. No, they'd called me to, to direct conflict, right? an yeah. episode. Yeah, and show. I had a yeah. it didn't work out. I love but that show. Has yeah. there has there ever been a job that you turned down? And you're like, shit. I wish I didn't do that. Uh, well, just because of my schedule. Since I started directing, you know, I've done uh, my schedule's been pretty full, and so I turned down Flash on a CW show, a Supergirl, which I thought would have been cool. Um, not like a huge Supergirl fan, but I thought it'd been fun to work um, on. So, okay, so let's go into, you, so you did a short film uh, a long time ago, Interpretation, and this, right? Yeah, well, I did a couple of short films. But, but, but I'm the, saying this is the main one. Yeah. And, and this one, like, how many film festivals? That one got in a bunch. Got in, like, 76. It won 24. But the, 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 fe- the short film. <laughs> Holy shit, I don't know if that many. Yeah, my short films yeah. were doing pretty good. But there was the, two. But the short film that, that and your, your viewers will probably know this because of Warrior, but the short film that launched my career was a uh, little three-and-a-half-minute short film I did called Lifted, oh, yeah. which is on YouTube, and it stars Joel Egerton, who played yep. Tom Hardy's and brother in Warrior. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the MMA fans who, who've seen that movie will know that one. And I work with uh, Tom and Joel on Warrior, uh, shooting and editing previs, uh, helping train, stuff like that in Pittsburgh. And so that's how I met Tom and I met Joel. And then when I was trying to shoot the short film, uh, the guy who was the, fi- uh, the financing company was a company called DJI. They make the drones. And so they had, you know, a big bankroll. And they said, if you can get a, a name actor, we'll, you know, cover the expense, blah, blah, blah. So we worked it out and I asked Joel if he wanted to come out for a few hours. And Joel made a we shot all his scenes in four hours, and then because of Joel's name, um, a, a lot of eyes got on the short, and then that helped me get in at NBC, it helped me get in at the different studios, and that's sort of what launched my career. So I'm very thankful to Joel, and actually his brother, Nash Edgerton. Nash is also a stunt coordinator turned director, and Nash, um, you know, I knew Joel before Nash, but then I became closer friends with Nash. Nash actually fights Denzel. I put Nash in Equalizer, he fights Denzel. Uh, when Denzel locks the door and he looks at his clock and he clocks everyone, Nash is the one that's sitting on the yeah. the, the right-hand side, the first one that pulls the gun up and, you know, Denzel breaks his arm with a Kimura. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. yeah, so that was... So those really launch, your, I mean, they help launch your career. Yeah, the, the short, short films, films launched my career. I think it's like, like anybody in any business that you're doing. It's crazy to me, like when I meet somebody and they're like, uh, I want to be an actor. And it's like, well, what have you been doing for two years? to try to, to do that. Well, nothing yet. And I was like, look, anyone, you want to open a McDonald's? You want to open a, a fight gym? You want to open a, like a Wendy's franchise? You're going to have to drop 750 grand. Yeah. You're going to have to do all this stuff. And it, all you have to do if you want to be a stuntman or an actor or a director is go shoot a little sample. Yeah, and they don't do piece. it. And no one does it. Yeah, it's, and it's being like, lazy as fuck. Yeah, when I'm on set over the years, I can't tell you how many actors have come up to me. Hey, man, it looks fun that what you're doing as, as a stuntman. How, how do I become a stuntman? And I say, hey, go make a reel like me. I just made a video with my friends. Yeah, you were like doing motorcycle, like like yeah. wheelies and like endos and shit. And yeah, like I just take my buddies jumping out. over cars. Yeah, and that was like before digital was cameras were shit. even, um, po- <clears throat> you know, so accessible. And I would just shoot little videos with my buddies. And then we would edit them together. Um, and then I would just sh- like literally pedal them around town until yeah. people would be like, I'm giving you a, a chance to work on my movie. Yeah. And I just, you know, so that whole thing, with same thing with you, like, you know, when you when you watch that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary called Pumping Iron, yeah, and it's so interesting to watch him talk about, you know, I'm gonna do this and that, and but there's a thing in it, like called the gleam in the eye, where you could just tell by the gleam in this dude's eye that he's gonna be successful one day, no matter what he touches, because like he's just like his relentless spirit, yeah. and then sure enough, that documentary was made in like what '76, and he went on to have an insane yeah. movie career. But you could just tell, like, the guy was, like, never going to take no for an answer. Right. And so if you have that same sort of, like, outlook and you sort of, like, reverse engineer your success, like, I remember thinking, okay, I would make a list of every director in Hollywood. And I'd be like, how did he break in? Okay, well, his dad was a studio executive producer. His dad, okay, this person. And I would make a list and I'd be like, okay, a large percent of people that broke in shot things out of their own pocket on spec, yeah. you know? And I was like, so I can probably have the best chance doing it that way since my dad's not a studio head. I have no friends or family in Hollywood. I'm just trying to, like, make it on my own. Yeah. And so when you reverse engineer your, 
Like if, like if I wanted to open, uh, invent toaster ovens, I would go buy a dozen toasters and break them apart to figure out like what makes yeah. them work best. It's the same thing with gyms. Like when you open your gym, you studied a bunch of other gyms. You yep. trained at gyms. Like you studied business plans. Like you it seems to, like common to. sense, but people don't, yeah. you know, do that when they're approaching their goals. I think a lot of people in life just like, I'm going to go where the wind takes me. And then they wake up and they're like, well, why didn't I ever achieve the goals I set out to? Because like you have to have a, you I know. Think Mark Wahlberg put it best. You got to be a doer. Remember how many podcasts we watched game. before this? The Rock. You guys watch a Seriously, lot of podcasts. Honestly, yeah. But like, yeah. you, you got to be a doer, man. You got to go out there and do it. And like, I'm I'm running this gym here. You know, I got my hands full already. But I'm my interest in, has been I in remember, film for yeah. years and years and years. And now that I'm I'm in a position where I have a little bit more time, I'm I'm right on it. So yeah. I'm actually doing a short film right now. And yeah, you're, yeah. You're helping me out, give me some advice on that, and I'm working on it's that. Pretty awesome. So this is like an exciting project that I'm shooting right now uh, yeah. here in Thailand, and. So yeah, I'm 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 doing it. You know, I'm I'm going for it, and like I'm going full speed ahead. And we're gone all weekend. We leave tomorrow morning, and we'll be gone like Like four four days into the middle of Thailand. This village in the middle of Thailand. Awesome. Shooting this thing for like four days. We're missing some important fights and stuff that happening, but we're missing a lot of stuff. We're missing Daniel Cormier's fight. We're gonna have to watch it uh, from the hotel, which is like 20 minutes from this village. Really? And then we're gonna try and watch the fight. Still do a podcast. I'm taking all this podcast from tour with us. So we're still going to do a recap from there while we're doing the short film while I'm overseeing the gym back home. So it's like there's no excuse for people that want to get into film and acting that don't do shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm, I'm juggling all of this because this is my passion, what I want to do. It's like you don't have an excuse. You know, these guys in Hollywood, they're walking around like, ah, I want to be an actor. I want to be in film. What have you shot? Nothing. Get your fucking camera out. Get yeah. your camera phone. Do they make iPhones now you can make full movies with? In fact, I'll give you an example. Go to Will Smith's Instagram. This guy's making like short films and like shit with his fucking iPhone. Will Smith, the actor? Yeah. The movie star, Will Smith. Yeah. He has an Instagram account now. Let me tell you something. I never thought much of Will Smith. I liked his show, Fresh Prince. He was cool. <laughs> then since then. He's like a huge star. How do you not love Will Smith? His acting's been amazing. But then, I don't know, for some reason I heard he was like a dick in person or something. I don't know. In an interview I saw, one of those things where it's like actors that get angry or something. I don't know. And so <laughs> I, I, I thought maybe he was not a cool dude, right? <laughs> then I followed him on Instagram and. He's the coolest fucking guy ever. So positive, so cool, such a nice guy. I left a comment on his Instagram, and I got like, luckily they rank it now, like yeah. on, on things. So I got like two thousand likes because I basically said he had just posted something. I was like, man, I'll be honest. I'm like, you know, I didn't know how I felt about you know. Uh, long story short, I was just saying you're a great person, and I love your Instagram account. And it's <laughs> and always then two thousand people were like, like, yeah, they all liked it. So stay at the top. It was really cool, but. Anyway, he did a short film in like a one room with his iPhone, and it was it's hilarious. He gets the, the him like the Will Smith and the Rock, like all these people. He has like you oh. have the good Instagram. No, but Will, didn't re- Will didn't reply though. I mean, yeah, like, still though. But but it was cool because what I'm saying is an example. He took an iPhone. You know, this guy took an iPhone and made this really cool, interesting Instagram. What did he do? He made a video. Or he he was in this room and he was basically. If you look at his account, it would be a dark complexed video. I don't know like the. But you, the picture he's is African kind of dark, American, dark complected. Uh, the whole video is dark complected. Oh, uh, and he's in this room, and basically he's waiting to be called on set, and he's just like filming, and he's just like, oh god, like basically saying how long it is, like it's taking forever. It's like he's sitting in this room, and he's like filming all these things, doing push-ups, and he's sweating, and he's like running, he's looking out the window, and he's like jumping on the bed, and he's like all frantic, like oh my god, The Rock and Kevin Hart's made three movies already, like he's freaking out, it's hilarious. <laughs> And then he's like all like in a serious mode and they're like, Will, we need you on set. And he's like, Okay, cool. And he cuts it off. But he was all excited. He was like, Cool. And then he's like out. But it's like things like that. Like like people need to do things. You gotta be creative. You gotta be a doer. You gotta go out there and do these things. It does help to be Will Smith as far as that. But goes, I'm just but saying, he he didn't need to do this, yeah. but he's doing it. So there's no excuse for these people that want to have a career in this. You're not gonna have a fucking career as a director and a filmmaker if you can't even go out there and use your phone to make a film. It's true. You can get your point across. Like what we were talking about Paul Greengrass, like how he shoots videos and, and the way he does it. You can get your point across with anything that shoots yeah. to set yourself apart. You know what I mean? But these guys just don't do it. And yeah. so it's like... You're talking about aspiring actors, aspiring everything. Yeah, there's no room for the lazy. And that's fighting too, anywhere. MMA, for sure. And everything. MMA. You got to do it, man. You got to get out there Dude. and fucking do it. Look and like Blair Witch Project. What is that with a fucking old cell phone? They did it. It was unbelievable. did it, man. But yeah. look at, I think the thing about how many now with the influx and like, and, and anytime you have a sport and you throw money at it, you're going to have everyone trying to do everything. Like, so all the people 
in the world trying to be MMA fighters. Yeah. And some people are like, I'm going to just work. I mean, working hard is half of it. Yeah. But then you have to work smart. There's so many people that like, why am I not winning fights? <clears throat> I, I get up every morning, run f for five miles. But it's like, are you learning how to, you know, uh, are you wrapping full guard when you're, when you're on the bottom? Or are you learning how to get to your feet to not like drain the clock? Or like whatever the techniques are yeah. that, that, that keep you, are you, are you only doing jujitsu or are you doing, uh, you know, wrestling that's implemented for like jujitsu, like whatever, like smart training, not just hard training. Right. And why are you winning uh, five fights in a row and nobody knows who you are? Because yeah. you got to sell yourself as Marketing, a business. Yeah. It's entertainment. Okay, it doesn't matter that it's fighting. You're in the entertainment industry. People are paying money to watch you perform. You're fighting, you know, but it's no different than dancing or acting or yeah. or doing any other talent. You're out there performing. So you have to have that it fact. You have to market yourself, brand yourself uh, as, as somebody that, that people want to see. And you got to fill seats, you know. And yeah, so it's like – sure. Same thing there. They got to work hard, uh, not only being a good fighter and, and training hard, but also marketing themselves. And it's just discipline, you know. And, and I, I think, as far as being an entrepreneur, what I've learned the most from books and studying is time management. Like time is 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 the key of everything. For How sure. you manage your time is the key of everything. Like wasting time or not being time efficient is is the worst thing ever. You have to put a price on your time. For sure, and and you got to make sure that w what you use that time for is worth that price, you know. Yeah, and that's how you propel yourself. You don't waste your time doing things that that are below what you should be doing, you know. And yeah. like, it's so important, man. And, and like in fighting and, and everything, there's such a small window. You got to capitalize. So time is of the essence. Yeah, I think a lot of people are well, they, like they don't succeed because they and micromanage. Yeah. Thanks, Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, too many people micromanage and try to do things themselves. You got to delegate, you know? Yeah. Okay, so enough with the inspiration and motivation. Yeah, no that was the nice inspiration and motivation segment of our show. I want to do another Brought hour. Brought to you now. by uh, <clears throat> Paul Padre Mark. Tequila. Um, <laughs> fixed sponsor of the I do uh, want to talk day. about your art decor here. What do you think I, about the set I think design. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, set, set deck is pretty nice. We, we went and picked all of this stuff out and had all this handmade. Pretty strong. Yeah, hey, you know what? In one day. The thing is, day. is that people, people don't <laughs> we have, have elephants people don't even see yeah. just because we want them here. The, the full appreciation will only be appreciated when that camera one day flips around. I guess it's going to be on like season four yeah. or like, uh, you know, podcast number 100. 100, yeah. you have to flip it around. We don't yeah. talk to the third wall. Oh. Well, you will. <laughs> that's, that's, that's I don't really know what that even means. It just sounded like a fourth wall. Yeah, like that one a, too. No, that, and an one industry, industry third wall slam. Yeah. 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 We don't talk to the third wall. Yeah, it's covered with a blanket. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I don't even know where we're at. We, we got so sidetracked. Thailand. But, so that was the inspiration motivational <laughs> section. Uh, so what I was going to say now is you're working on big stuff. So why don't you talk about Braven? So you just directed a feature film. It's a very good film, and I like the fact you're an action director. So now you're directing films, but it's so geared for action. And, and, and the action sequences in this film, how people die, spoiler alert, people die. Oh, uh, it's very it. creative and cool because you're an action guy for your whole life, right? So yeah. so how was directing Braven and and tell people how they can see it? And uh, You can see it Braven. It's a action thriller Starring Jason Momoa, Stephen Lang. Stephen Lang was the main villain yeah. in Avatar. Uh, and a guy named Garrett Dillahunt. Jason Fantastic. Was in, yeah, Game of Thrones. Yeah, Game of Thrones. And Jason's also in, um, plays Aquaman in the new Justice League. But you can watch it on iTunes, Amazon, uh, any of the streaming channels. Yep. Just type in Brave, and it was on iTunes uh, Top Movies. Uh, it came out in February, and it was on the Top Movie list. We saw it there at Dance list. House. Yeah, Dance House, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was on the Top Movie list for like four months. It was movie night at Dance House. And so I was with him when they had the theater going, and it was on top podcast or t not top high, top top, uh, top movies. movies. Is this a dick yeah. thing to say? But how can I bootleg it? And you know what? Speaking of bootleg, did I not see dick thing to say? Yeah, yeah. All right. dick thing to say. I I'll be honest with you. I will send you. My I want my four from cents iTunes. back. <laughs> yeah, I I made sure I bought it off iTunes because I I want to support you. And and the thing is, is uh, was it? Did you post something about it being bootlegged in a different country or something? You oh, no, saw one something of my where friends, they were, they were yeah, selling I took it, a like picture DVD? of it in some foreign country, and it was like, I was like, wow, it came out yesterday, and then she, she sent me, texted me a picture of like a thing in like Indonesia or something like that, God, traveling. What a dick over here. 
boot, yeah. trying to boot like his. I, that's how he makes his money. No, I don't. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm not going to bootleg it. It's seven dollars. I can throw. I'll give you seven. It's not even bootleg seven. It. It's like four or five to rent. Jeez. Well, I get the you get forty eight hours. To, I like the four K version. You get forty eight hours to watch it. I know that because I wasted time watching a movie one time and they cut me off and I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I they, only say, me, they only give me 48 hours just, to watch just it. Just throw this in. You know how many people try to bootleg our, our, the AK logos and T-shirts and shit? Yeah. I had a Russian woman bring in her phone. She's like, can I buy this shirt? And I was like, man, that's fake. We don't do it. She got mad at me. I'm like, man, we, that's not us. It's fake. Yeah. So I'm it's just, horrible so quality. I how, oh, it's, it's, it's Every AK like Thailand shirt that's not made to AK Thailand falls apart within yeah. one day. True story. We know all about the bootleg. So I was yeah, none of mine have fallen apart. No. The 40, you got the authentic the 40 ones. one. The 40 I have. Yeah. And yeah. you wear them all. I really appreciate you wearing them all the time. Because you do. Literally, I'm going to, when this podcast is over, I'm going to show you. This is one of the few times I've you, seen you not wearing one. Yeah, it's because I've, I have I've, i don't have a washer, washing machine here, and I've yeah. worn like all seven of them in Thailand. <laughs> yeah. Didn't I get and I got the shorts now and the tank tops. I've yeah. got a, do you I'm, want this one? I'm swagged out. I will take that after this is over. No problem. Um, mm-hmm. No, I'm going to show you like 10 Instagram photos where you can, like, I'm going to zoom in. You'll see like I'm wearing your AKA yeah. shirt and everything. And They're everything. so faded now because he's worn them so many times and watched them. You can't hardly tell. So yeah, like exactly. I'll, I'll look at a picture and I'll be because I'll see some writing on the shirt. but can't tell. So I'll it's zoom AKA. in. I'll be like, I'll be damned. It doesn't make it so comfortable. I've seen them yeah. I have them on the Instagram. Remember, guys, y'all two made my Instagram. They're my yep. first two followers. That's right. Oh, That's two blue right. chicks. And now how many, how many followers do you have? So, is it 40,000 or no 1300 oh yeah <laughs> yeah so you can follow mark bogutsky at mark m-a-r-c bogutsky yeah you can be one of the 1311 that do right now i yeah. think it's 1311 and you can follow mike at mike underscore underscore swig why did you put the but underscore most in there? importantly you yeah. can follow len oding which everybody does at already. len oding at len i hang out with O-E-D-I-N-G. nothing but celebrities dot <laughs> oding wait what oh. <laughs> it's L I N O E D I N G. Yeah. L I N O E D I N G. Yep. That's Shit. my at my Instagram at. But uh, we'll put um, why did link. you why did you put the uh, yeah, yeah put in the link? Uh, why? <laughs> I, I need the I need the three more followers. I, I didn't do, three. I have a hundred. Oh, hold on, let me this guess. Let me quick guess. Quick. You. You're about to ask me about my underscore. Yeah. Why is your underscore in your, your mind, in your dude. Instagram name? It's director thing we got going. We're both filmmakers. Uh, okay, now. I'm wrapping. Yeah. I'm wrapping it up. I'm doing a film right now. We're we're both filmmakers, so we're we're like beamed into each other's mind, right? Um, I don't know. I signed <laughs> I signed up for Instagram, and they didn't give me a choice. There is some other Mike Swick in the world who's just getting raking in all the followers. Oh, I'm that, sure they get so many requests. That there's all men. To do with like, them. All the men. I'm sure. All the DMs. I get like a one a day. Well, luckily, you have the blue check, so now people know that. Which one's a legit serious. Mike Swift? We all yeah. three have the blue check. But now that I have the blue check, I want to change my whole bio. Because right now it's like, you know, I, I, I fought in the UFC for fun. I try to be funny, you know. And like, yeah, I have these companies with AK Thailand to support that. And real quick, Mike Swick and all that. But I kind of want to just say something stupid and that's it. Because I have a blue check. I think it's cool when you have someone that you go to their account. They have a blue check and they just say, like, I like fish. And you're just like, who the fuck is this person? <laughs> yeah. And you have to like scroll who, like you, nine, then, then you're curious, nine scrolls. Right? Yeah, and you're like, oh, he's a music out, DJ. Who is this fucking person? They got so many followers. They got a blue check. But they're going to tell you who they are. There's some people like that that I've That's seen. That's cool, though. They have in that like seven, eight, nine million. And I'm like, why do so many people follow well, what this? About, isn't it Kanye West only? Well, some are famous follows, people. I just don't know. That's like what I'm rappers. I, isn't it whoever. Kanye West has like, you know, 80 million, whatever, how many, and but only follows one? Who is that that only, or somebody? There's a lot of them. Beyonce. Oh, okay. I happen to know Beyonce coming. follows zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. I just happen to. So what's your total coinc- like a blank By screen? total coincidence, I, I saw that yesterday because Jay-Z was on a jet ski with a helmet and 50 Cent was giving him a hard time saying, what the hell are you doing yeah. on 4th of no, July? No, I saw like nine memes He was memes like, he was like, like punched down on like a jet yeah. ski with a helmet on. He was like scared to death. And it showed Beyonce like jumping waves with no helmet. Her hair was like blowing in the wind. She was like having the time of her Hilarious. life. She didn't even follow her husband. And so then I clicked on uh, I clicked on Beyonce's uh, Instagram to see if I could find Jay Z. I don't know if he had an Instagram or not. He doesn't. But she's following zero. But she's got obviously yeah. millions and millions of followers. I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So Braven, it's out on iTunes. <laughs> now I'm getting my plug in before this thing's over. Cause um, we're, no, this is a lo- show. I love it. Jay- I love Jay Z and all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's on iTunes Hova. and Amazon. Three fourteen. That's it. And then my, my second feature film is coming out. That, so the first one uh, was... Listen to what on it's coming. Yeah, I'm about to tell you. What up? 
It's uh oh, <laughs> I told him already. Yeah. So the first one, Braven is out, and actually, what was I was I was excited about was that Braven had um what called certified or positive fresh tomatoes on RottenTomatoes.com from L.A. Times, New York Post, uh you know Variety, Hollywood Reporter, all the major publications. So um, I'm not saying you're gonna love it. It's a good movie, man. Come on, teach their own. Don't sell yourself short. I'm not, but it's uh, it's entertaining. Yeah, you'll, you'll dig it. Let's so, go. So go from start the, to finish, and that's what a movie is about. Keeps yeah. you into it the whole time. And one thing I will say, which most people outside of production don't understand, is like we made that movie for four point nine million dollars, which is like the craft services, uh, like water and like Gatorade budget on most. Way to keep it under five, yeah. brother. Good yeah. job. And also, we shot it in twenty two days. So when you watch that movie, like don't think about the oh, production that's crazy. days. I didn't know that. And then afterwards, think about every single stunt, location, snow. That's crazy. It, you know. I don't want to see the, the thing going off the cliff, like all that crazy, stuff yeah. in 22 days. It's insane. Yeah. Damn. And the next, so, the next film. And the fast. next film is called Office Uprising. It's a horror, a comedy horror, uh, in the vein of uh, Shaun of the Dead, Zombieland, um, kind of vibe, and it's uh, tested really well in the test screening. So I'm excited about that, and uh, totally different vibe from Brave. And I wanted to try something else. Cool. I read the script. I dug it. And um, it's basically like Zombie Land meets uh, Office Space. How can so, I watch it? Uh, and it comes out July nineteenth on Crackle, Sony Crackle. Crackle. And if Crackle's you're in a foreign shit. country, it comes out in, in theaters nice. internationally. But nowadays, with the streaming and stuff, the indie, these indie films are a lot of them are going straight to Netflix and yeah, of course, iTunes, yeah, Amazon. Digital. So it's on all the smart TVs uh, and the Apple is the iTunes store, Apple store, or yeah. the Apple interface, uh, Apple, Apple TV. TV. Apple yep. TV. Yeah, you can watch Crackle in there. So it'll yeah. come out in two weeks from now. So cool, man. Well, thanks for taking the time to be on the show. I know you yeah, leave it was soon, fun, man. and it was a quick trip here to Thailand, but you made time for awesome, us. Awesome, brother. We had an awesome day on the boat. Which you, can yeah. check, you can check our Instagrams out and look at the stories and see how cool yeah. of a time we had on the boat. Oh, I didn't even and, know and, until no, no, they no, got and, off and, the boat. And, that and, were on there. and, and, and sadly, you, I sent him a link today uh, with about the the the, 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 the storm. The, the remember the thing? Oh yeah, yeah, and it capsized the boat. A boat 50 capsized. Right Fifty six people were missing. Right, right out in front of us. Hey, his, also his shout resort. out to the kids that are in the cave right now too. Yeah. So yeah, I hope the best for them. There's yeah. been a lot of yeah. yeah. The weather's rough shit. season. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were caught in a storm coming back. Yeah. And we barely made at, it back. I looked at Mar Mike and he was like curled up under. I've never the been so like curled in my life like, like in fetal like posi <laughs> in fetal position. Yeah. Covered. It was like a wet towel and rain pouring on me. It's just rain. Yeah, but it was so. It was cool. It was, it was well, a great trip. The boat was parked, actually. It was a great trip. <laughs> we, were, we were just... <laughs> Did they have a floaties? It was, um, no, I was going to say, I know the podcast isn't about uh, plugging the gym. This is completely separate. But for those who do come out to Thailand, um, when I've been training this week at the gym, every time after each class, I go to the... It's called Contender, Contender Cafe. Contender Cafe. The Our best restaurant food on, site. on the island. Yeah. It's awesome, Thanks, man. man. And it's all healthy for like fighter stuff. So it's I'll like. Be, we're not telling them to say any of this, man. I feel yeah. bad because it sounds like uh, we, we gave you a script to like plug everything, but you're yeah, just genuinely serious, happy with everything. Right here. No, just, no, don't you don't have to mention that there's convenient travel packages that take all the hassle of traveling to Thailand for your first time. <laughs> all you have to do is land and train. Info at akthailand.com. Oh, really Truly, good. though. No, I love <laughs> it. I love it. I was That's already, I was out here on the side of the, you know, globe yeah, for my buddy. Sheldon's wedding, I'd, I'd mentioned that to you, and so yeah. I was like, I got to go to Phuket and train with the, and train and eat. Well, and thank hang you for out. stopping by every time you come around this part of the world. Yeah, I have you to. Do. I have to. I love the gym. I love the Contender Cafe. Mark, Aww. he cracks me up. I like Mark. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Pretty pretty He's not bad. I got to pee, though. He grows on you after about 20 years. Huh. Like, literally grows on you for 20 years. <laughs> we had fun. We played pool the other night. Huh? He was hustling all these lady boys. Racking oh, up. he, oh, buddy. Five bot at a time. Well, you, he's got you, quite the reputation. You wanted to meet some boys. nice people, so. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You, uh, and I'm proud of you. Two beers, one shot, and you're gone. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty weird. Yeah. An eight year old kid had to carry him home. We had to get up early for the boat ride, so. Yeah. No, then, I we know. Took, then we took Dramme, and we were all fucked up. Yeah, because the pills made us so sleepy. I know, and we probably didn't even need it because the boat get, was big enough. Well, for, that it wasn't at first even we didn't have a storm. It was like crystal clear, perfect day. Well, I remember I worked it. Did y'all um have a a driver or a fucking captain or? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because the only thing I saw was you driving. I'm like, did you rent this shit? And no, he he drove part of the way. 
Look at you. You just go. sold the tiger. Hey, move out, move out. And then Did y'all do the uh Titanic thing? On yeah, of course. Together. The crucifix? Yeah. Back to back. We didn't put it on Instagram though. No. It's for our own memories. <laughs> <laughs> After twenty years you want to have something's private. We just DM it to each other back yeah, and forth. Yeah. Sounds fun. Direct message. And he sends it back oh. as if I haven't seen it. I, send I know it you back. haven't gotten it yet, probably. 1,300 followers, so I'm just letting you know. Eventually, you'll get this thing called a DM. It's on the right. You'll get like a little number on the top right. It's a message. Well, I'm about to go do a BM in that bathroom. Can we hurry this up? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Later. Later.